Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. This week's show is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be talking about what we feel was a major tragedy that happened in the reptile community here in America. And that was the addition of four species to the Lacey Act by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. The Burmese pythons, two species of African rock pythons, and the yellow anaconda were added to the Lacey Act. You may ask, what is the Lacey Act? In simple terms, it protects both plants and animals by creating both civil and criminal penalties for a wide array of violations, and most notably prohibits the trade of wildlife, fish, and plants that have been illegally taken, transported, or sold. What does this mean to you? In layman terms, it basically means that these four species of animals will no longer be allowed to be imported or transported across state lines. How will this affect you? Say you have a Burmese python as a pet like my girl Sunshine and you have to move out of state for work or any other reason, your pet snake will not be coming with you. What if you do educational shows all around your area and sometimes travel out of state? Sure, there's provisions for educational permits, but they're not going to be easy to get and there's certainly no guarantee so it could affect your livelihood. What if you're military? You could sacrifice your life for fighting for the freedom of our country, but you will not have the freedom to take your pet Burmese python with you if you get transferred to another base. Why did this rule change happen? It all started in South Florida. Whether these animals escaped from facilities during Hurricane Andrew or were released by irresponsible pet owners, they took hold in the Everglades. Most people agree that this was a major problem and certainly needed to be addressed. A USGS report was written, and in it were claims that these animals could migrate from South Florida and potentially inhabit one-third of the country. A study was done down in South Carolina. The idea behind it was to release 10 Burmese pythons into an 80 by 100 foot outdoor enclosure and see if they could survive the winter. All 10 of them died in December and January. Now let me ask you something. Does that sound like a nationwide threat of animals invading the North? Of course not. This is a localized problem to only South Florida. Florida's solution to this localized problem was to institute a permit system. You would have to register your Burmese python, African rock python, and yellow anaconda with the state microchip them so they could keep track of things. If your Burmese or any other animal showed up in the Everglades, there was going to be a stiff penalty and potentially even jail time. Problem solved, right? So why did the U.S. Fish and Wildlife feel the need to punish the rest of the country for a South Florida problem? It's probably because of special interest pressure. Organizations like the HSUS want to push their no pet snake agenda. They use false statistics and fear mongering to convince the powers to be that the entire country is under threat. They even use the tragic death of a child in Florida to bolster their argument. In the meantime, our voice was not heard. All right, guys, obviously all of us here at BHB are going to do everything we can to fight this ban and make sure it doesn't get any worse for us. I want to know your guys' feelings on this. I want to know what you guys are going to do about it and how you feel about this. How does it impact your life? Leave us a comment below and let us know. Will this recent addition to Lacey help solve the problem? Of course not. The ironic thing is that with a permit, you can still breed all of these snakes in Florida. It hasn't changed anything in Florida at all. All it's done is punish the rest of the country. Who does this really hurt? This is gonna cost our country tons of jobs from breeders to keepers to rodent suppliers and even cage and supply manufacturers. I care for snakes for a living. It's how I pay my bills. There are many people out there that have the same job as me at facilities that specialize in breeding large snakes. These people are gonna be out of a job now because their employers aren't gonna be able to pay them. What about the animals? Being that this takes effect 60 days from being implemented, what's going to happen to all the baby snakes this year? Take for instance this Burmese python. Her name is Baby. She's already been bred and is gravid. She's going to probably have 40 to 60 babies this year. What am I going to do with the babies? Am I going to have to euthanize them? Or worse yet, what if I lived in a warm climate where I might be encouraged to release the animals because I couldn't do anything else with them? Isn't that exactly what this law is intended to stop happening? What about the special interest groups that are pushing their anti-animal abuse agenda that are really pushing this law to go into effect. Aren't they going to be responsible for tens of thousands of animals to die an unneeded death? Let me ask you this. How do you enforce this law? What do you have checkpoints at every state line? Wouldn't it have made more sense for them to have a permit system like Florida so that they could actually track the animals rather than outlawing interstate traffic? 
The true tragedy is that these snakes will be all but gone in 20 years from now. People like me that'll keep them as pets but won't breed them anymore will have to watch them die of old age. And then what happens? They're basically gone. That's going to be stealing from future generations so they won't have the experience that I've been able to keep for the last 25 years. So what can we do? We need to support the organizations that fight for our rights to keep these animals. Organizations like US Art and PJAC do a tremendous job. If it wasn't for them, this ban could have been much worse. Trust me, they need our help. We have to do a better job of changing people's minds about these amazing but sometimes misunderstood animals. We here at BHB and Snake Bites TV are going to be spearheading a project that we hope you guys will want to be involved in. It's going to be called Snake Awareness Day. It's going to happen sometime in early May and we're going to want you guys to go down and volunteer your time to the local school, library or any other public place that will allow you to put on an educational show about snakes. We're going to really do some amazing things with this project. I tell you what, but we have to do a better job of changing the public opinion of snakes because I can't handle losing more animals to ridiculous laws or bans. This has been Brian from Snake Bites.